never, ever. Everybody, Dawson here, and we are going to be looking at solving for y in this um, in this video. So sometimes you get a big equation like this, and you have x and y on the both sides of the same of the same. Sorry, you have x and y on the same side of the equation, and we want it in our standard y equals mx plus b format. So if you remember this idea that y equals mx plus b, you have your x plus b on one side, y on the other. This is nice because the m will give us our slope, the b will give us our y-intercept, and it's all in that standard format. You don't get that when it's um, in standard form, which is uh, with both x and y on the same side of the equation. So let's learn how to solve for y. And really, it's going to be the same thing when we're solving an equation. In this particular example, there's a two-step equation that we have here. It's just that we're not going to get down to one number. We're going to get down to a whole expression or a whole equation. So <clears throat> first thing we want to do, because we want y by itself, we want to get rid of this x over here. If I have four x's over here and I want to get rid of them, I have to subtract four x's on this side. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do on the other. And so this cancels out. And I'm left with 2y on this side of the equation. Well, that's nice. Over here, negative 6 minus 4x. There's a problem. You can't subtract x's from whole numbers. And so I can't do anything in terms of putting these together. I cannot combine these like terms. So I have to just write it as negative 4x minus 6. And that's all I can do. So in some ways, it's easier. It just looks more complicated. Now, the last step as it usually is, is if I have a, a um, coefficient in front of y or in front of our variable that I want to get rid of, I have to divide by whatever's in front of it. So 2 divided by 2, it's going to get me 1, and that cancels that out. In this case, I have to divide everything on the other side. Each term, I have to divide by 2. Each term on the other side, I have to divide by 2. So I'm left with y on this side. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2x. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And that is my new equation. So here's my slope, negative 2, and my y-intercept, negative 3. Great. So let's try another example of this. And in this example, we're going to start with the equation negative 2x plus 3y equals 3. <clears throat> All right, so here's our equation. We're going to go through the same process that we did before. So I, have, I want to get rid of my x's. So I'm going to, in this case, add 2x, because that's a negative, and I want to make that go away. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to both sides of the equation. That's going to cancel out. And we're left with 3y on this side, 2x plus 3, because I cannot put those two together. Divide both sides by 3. Remember, every term has to be divided by 3. This leaves me with 1y, which is just y. Now, this does not turn out to be an even number, so we just leave it as 2 thirds x. 2 thirds x, that's my rise, that's my run, so no problem, I can do that. Plus 3 divided by 3, which is 1. And there is my equation. All right, so that's solving for y. And lots of examples for how to do this, but um, that's your basics of how to solve for y. Great. So uh, here's your math joke. <clears throat> I wouldn't let you get away without your math joke. So what keeps a square in one place? You give up. Square roots. Roots hold it in place. Yeah, I know. It's a corny joke. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I will see you in class. Never. Never.